call the Common Council meeting of April 20th, 2021 to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Kirkowski. Here. Alderman Lorick is excused. Alderman Dukniak. Uh, here. Tillman. Here. Gale. Here. Guzikowski. Here. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mike, would you start us off? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Yep. Before we proceed with the minutes, uh, we're going to ask Catherine to read in the notice of video conferencing. The City of Oak Creek is authorized to hold this public meeting remotely during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This meeting being conducted via Zoom video conference with telephone conferencing capabilities was duly noticed for the City of Oak Creek Municipal Code and statutory notice requirements more than 24 hours in advance of the meeting. This meeting may also be viewed at the City's YouTube page. This meeting recording will also be accessible on the City's YouTube page within 48 hours. When unmuted, all participants must state their name and address for the record, then proceed with comments or questions. Questions and comments may also be entered into the Q&A function within the Zoom webinar control panel. The moderator will monitor the function during the meeting and provide the information requested. There is one or more public hearings scheduled as part of this meeting. After the mayor announces the public hearing, staff will read the public hearing notice into the record, state that the hearing is open and subject to the meeting procedure and provide a brief overview of the proposal. The chair will then proceed with the hearing by making calls for public comment. Following the third call for public comment, the chair will close the public hearing and proceed to consideration of the remaining agenda items. Thank you, Catherine. Certainly. Uh, that will bring us up to approval of the minutes of April 5th, 2021. Everybody please take a look. And you are satisfied there's no errors, omissions, or discussion. Uh, we'll take a motion. Kowski, you make a motion to approve the minutes of April 5th, 2021. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Um, our next order of business is Common Council President, but before we do that, I'd like to offer my congratulations to the three gentlemen that just got reelected. And you, Mayor. Congratulations, and thank, thank you Mayor. very much for your service. Appreciate Same that. Same to you, Mayor. That will get us to the election of Common Council President. Uh, we have all been through it before, but I'm going to refresh your memory and read the procedure. So, uh, the chair will explain the procedures for the Common Council. By statute, the election of an officer of the Common Council shall be done by paper ballot. This is the only time this body votes by secret ballot and that it may be cast that way. The chair will open the floor for nominations, which can be made by any of the older persons. Once all nominations are made, there will be a motion to close the nominations and, and a vote can be cast by paper ballot or if there is only one nomination received, an older person can move to close the nominations and cast a unanimous ballot with a second, after which there will be a, a roll call. So at this time, I will open the floor for nominations. Thank you, Mayor Dan. Uh, Alderman Dukniak, third district. Alderman Dukniak nominates for Common Council President, Ken Gale. Alderman Guzikowski, second. Are there other nominations? Alderman will move those are nominations and cast okay. you for Alderman Ken Gill. Oh, I'm sorry. Got me now? Okay, Alderman Tolman will make a motion to close the nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for common council president or uh, alderman, <laughs> not the common <laughs> council president yet, <laughs> Alderman Gale. Mr. Kelsey will second. Roll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, we have one more thing. We still need to formally vote, then a subsequent motion will be made to cast a vote for the nominee. Correct? We're good, Danny. Oh, we're set? Okay. 
Okay. Congratulations. You did. Excellent. Okay, we can move on. Um, that will get us to recognition, and that is a mayoral proclamation for the upcoming Harbor Day celebration. Uh, Catherine, if you would. Certainly, Arbor Day Proclamation. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agricultural that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed when the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Daniel J. Bikavich, Mayor of the City of Oak Creek, do hereby proclaim April 30th is Arbor Day in the City of Oak Creek. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations, dated this 20th day of April 2021. Thank you very much, Catherine. No vote is needed. Um, and usually we do have a ceremony and we do plant the trees somewhere in the city for Arbor Day. So we'll check with forestry and see if they're doing that this year. I'm unaware if we're doing it. So we will check. Uh, we're all very much fans of trees, not so much the leaves, but we do like the tree. So <laughs> with that, enjoy the Arbor Day. That will get us to item six. And this is our our public, our only public hearing of the night, and that is a consideration of a rezone um, <clears throat> for the property at 9330 28 South Nicholson Road from RS3 single family to A1 limited agriculture. There'll be no change, change to the flood fringe. Catherine, if you'd please read the official notice. Certainly, public hearing number one is to consider requests submitted by Mark and Kim Verhalen to rezone a portion of the property shown as lot two on a proposed certified survey map at for 93328 South Nicholson Road from RS3 single family residential to A1 limited agricultural district, no change to FF flood fringe district with variation requests related to the minimum lot size and width for the proposed lot two. Applicant is Mark and Kim Verhalen, property owner Mark and Kim Verhalen. There follows the legal description, date of notice, March 24th, 2021. Thank you, Catherine. And with us is um, Director of Community Development, Doug Seymour. Doug? Oh, you're muted, Doug. I'm having a hard time. Now? Um, not very well. A little bit of an echo, and you're kind of freezing up there a little bit. How about now? I think it sounds better. Yeah, keep talking, see what happens. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're going to try this. Oh, there you go. Uh, so oh, you're fading in and out, Doug. Sorry. Uh, Can you hear me now? I'm yes, sorry. Yes. I apologize for this. All right, I'm, I'm just going to keep talking until I hear otherwise. So, if you if um, you stop, I'll let you know. All right, thank you. Uh, good good evening. My name is Doug Seymour. I'm the director for the city of Oak Creek, and this is a public hearing of the property nine three three zero South Nicholson Road from RS three single family residential. To A1 limited agricultural, and just as a note, there will be no change to the flood fringe zoning district. As you can see on your screen, hopefully, that a portion of this property be rezoned from RS3 single family to A1 agricultural. And the, uh, the portion of that's be rezoned is identified as L2, and I will be putting that up shortly. 
as parcel two on a proposed CSM, which is a subsequent item on this agenda. The council will note that the Agricultural Zoning District requires a minimum lot width of 150 feet and a minimum lot area of five acres. And uh, this rezoning request and subsequent CSM would not meet that minimum requirement. Uh, the applicants have uh, provided for variations and a narrative explaining the rationale for that request. So 14.180 of the code on a case-by-case -case basis, variations uh, to the land division requirements uh, provided as recommended by the Comp Plan Commission if evidence is presented with four criteria, and I can go over those, uh, they, they are attached to your code. Questions uh, about that, but the Plan Commission did hear the request of the applicant uh, and they had determined that, that the four criteria had been met and they actually had recommended that the property be rezoned, the subsequent CSM be approved uh, in accordance with chapter 14.180. So I, I, I expect that the application uh, for the commission, I'm sorry, for the council to justify the, the variation request because it is, it, it's a a little bit more than just uh, what we've seen in some of the past applications of that. We, you know, uh, as you look at it, it uh, it's a little bit more than we've seen the variations uh, in the past. I think we remember one on Oakwood Road that it's in, it was a matter of less than a foot. This one was quite a bit more. So I mean, I think that's as we hear from the applicant, he can he can explain to you why he's requesting this variations, why it makes sense. Mission. Uh, essentially recommended that this, this be granted. Uh, remember, this is also part of a proposed survey server map. So actually these two go together and they'll be subsequent on the item, but this is a, a public hearing and a request to rezone the property. And as such, I would ask that any, if there's anyone out there, either in person or in the virtual realm, has any questions or comments regarding the proposed rezoning of this property to uh, please indicate your presence uh, to the moderator when prompted give your name and address and address your questions to the common council this okay we're going to consider this public hearing now open we will make three calls this will be the first anybody wishing to speak please approach podium name and address uh, mark anything Mark for Halen, 9330 South Nicholson Road. Um, we're the applicants for the zoning change. Um, if you all look at the map, uh, lot two um, doesn't have the uh, required uh, frontage on the road anymore. Um, before we uh, uh, requested a certified survey for the home that's built there now, there was enough uh, frontage on the road. But uh, getting back to one of the main reasons we asked for the rezoning, um, as some of you on the council know, um, our family still farms in Oak Creek. We're one of the last farms left in Oak Creek. Um, if you go east of what's shown on the map, there's an additional 30 acres approximately that belongs with this property, um, the railroad right away divides it off from this particular piece. Uh, the back or the rear acreage is all zoned A1 agriculture already. Um, we want to uh, get the front part rezoned to match the back end, so the whole property is zoned um, the same. Um, one of the main reasons we want this is right now uh, we're a legal non-conforming use on our property because that front section is zoned residential. So um, by zoning it back to A1, that portion of it, uh, that makes us a uh, conforming use with the zoning that's in place. Uh, secondly, um, <clears throat> the 85 feet that's remaining on the street there uh, does not allow uh, for anything else but uh, probably one more home could be built there if it remains residential. There isn't enough room to put a street right away through there. There's not enough road frontage for a street right away. So essentially the whole rear of that property 
there's nothing else that can be done with it because there's no way to get a street back there. So there's really no reason to continue on with the residential zoning at this point. Um, those two be the main two reasons. Um, I think it pretty much states our case. The main reason is we want to become a conforming use in the city here because, um, you know, having non-conforming use properties scattered around isn't really um, conducive to having um, you know, conformity in the city. You don't like to see that. I speak, I guess, from some of my experiences when I was in your positions there as an alderman. But, uh, you know, other than that, uh, the property, there's no need to keep it in residential because there's no possible any uh, additional homes that can be built on there with a the residential zoning. So if there's any questions to me, I'd be happy to answer if, if there is any. Um. Yep, Alderman Dupniak, 3rd District, right. and um, I'll begin by saying I, I have met with Mark a couple of times to, to try and have him explain and, and clarify his rezoning request. I met with Doug Seymour last week, Tuesday, again, just to, to, get, a better, to get a better handle on, on this request, and I thought, okay, I understood what was going on, and then I received a phone call from a resident at 6 o'clock this evening that really threw me for a loop, uh, saying that you don't the, the way that he understands your request you don't need to have a rezone and and i i told that resident uh that i couldn't answer him uh, answer that statement or, or provide any information to that statement so doug if you can or mark if you can again his statement was why is he asking for a rezone when the way that the lots are currently drawn He's he's saying you are compliant. Well, uh, I guess Doug can can explain in more detail than I can. But okay. just for a brief overview, as I stated a minute ago, we're right now I am a legal non-conforming use, and I believe that um, I can keep operating my my farm there um, until I would sell it or perhaps even turn the operation over to my son. And I'm not quite sure that even if I turn the operation over to my son, being that um, I am the person that's, you know, enjoying the non-conforming use right now, I don't believe that transfers going forward to any other person that would subsequently own that property. So okay. if something happens to me, the non-conforming use goes away and then it goes back to residential. As I stated a minute ago, there's no reason to keep it residential because nothing else can be developed on that property because there isn't enough frontage to put a road in there to access any more homes. You could put one more home in there with uh, the frontage that's left. So um, to me, um, it, it makes sense to, you know, cater to the request, I guess, to rezone back to A1 Agriculture. As I said before, it matches the balance of the property in the rear, which is another 34 acres. So um, kind of, puts everything together in one one zoning, allows me to be a true conforming use oh, with the okay. with the use that we have there according to the zoning that would be put in place and and it kind of cleans everything up. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Doug, anything oh, if I may uh, uh, not having the, the benefit of having spoken with, with this person, knowing exactly what they're asserting in this case, I mean it put, kind of puts us at a disadvantage. Although I will say in response to Mark's question or comment that non-conforming uses can continue, legally non-conforming uses can continue uh, and despite a change in ownership. It's just a matter of if, if the use is discontinued, it can't be reintroduced. And, and you know, I, I understand uh, it's a choice that, that the property owner is making and applying for rezoning back to agricultural. And so that's, that's the property owner's choice. And it's, the, it's as, as right as a property owner to request that from, from the council. Uh, the, the statement that he doesn't need to divide the land to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. I mean, I'll let Mark explain and he has what he wants to accomplish, but the way the city measures the width of a lot uh, would be at the building setback line. So in essence, a flag lot like this would not be a legal conforming lot. So uh, that is, again, not knowing exactly what statement was, Rich, or Alderman okay. Duking Act was made to you. I mean, I, I can say that, I mean, this would, the configuration of this parcel as we see it to this evening would require rezoning and that rezoning would, and land division would require a variation that's approved by this council. 
Doug, let me ask, and Alderman Dukniak once again, um, have rezoning requests of this type been made and approved in the past? Uh, they have, Alderman, uh, although I will again just re reiterate that usually it's a matter of a few feet uh, and not uh, in this case, uh, I think it's uh, almost, what do we say there, uh, almost uh, 65 feet. So that's a bit unusual, but uh, yes, this council has granted variations to lot width requirements as part of rezonings in the past. Okay, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Second call, anyone wishing to speak? Third and final call. Okay, we will now close the public hearing and we will move on to seven, which is consideration of the ordinance rezoning that portion of the property at 9330 South Nicholson Road. Comments, questions from council? I know Doug's, you know, we had some technical difficulties. So if you have some questions, I'm gonna re-ask. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Did, the, did you guys, was there any official map streets on that parcel over here? No, there were none. Uh, that that has always been farmed. So we, yeah. we there was nothing. It's been farmed there since 1946. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's no street. I'm sorry, Mark, you know, you gotta be up here. Okay. But but as Mark said, it's been okay. farmed since 46 and there are no official plot. Yeah, well, Mark, you, uh, you set it up, you've drawn it at the, uh, the little flag leg on the northern parcel piece of that parcel is wide enough to build a house Let's yes see. there's 85 feet there's just enough for one more house that's it so if we put a if we put a house there on the, the front portion of that property then the, the whole back is landlocked yep. and the 85 feet that's frontage there it's not enough to put a legal street in there so if I, if I if i would if i if i would forego putting a lot there on an 85 foot of frontage you need 90 feet to put a road in so i'm five feet short is that a butt uh old ryan road there mark on the south side no no we're, we're separated by uh the sepi property on the south they have 10 10 more acres to the south of us and, and to clarify and i mean I, I know mark may, may have intentions on a future land division that would landlock lot two I mean, at this point in time, and again, since that has not been proposed, it's hard for us to react to that, but uh, we would not approve a land division that landlocked that parcel. Uh, so he's correct that you can build a house on that and houses are allowed on agricultural properties as part of an operating farm. So you could have a home there. Uh, it just would need to be part of lot two. Like I say, it's it's just you know what you're getting into. Yeah, you get the you get the same you get the same end result, one home. But like I say, it changing that whole parcel two to to, to uh, a one matches all the rest of it. So we've got the whole property then is is a one agriculture, and we still only get one house. The same thing I would get with the residential, and then we're a non-conforming use in the whole rest of it. So it, like I say, doing this it cleans everything up. I agree. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Uh, anyone else? If not, motion, please. All right. Uh, Dukniak moved to approve ordinance number 3004, rezoning a portion of the property at 9330 South Nicholson Road from RS3, single family residential, to A1 Limited Agricultural. No change to the flood fringes district. Kuzikowski, a second. Roll call. Alderman Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tolman? Aye. And item eight is a resolution approving a certified survey map for the for Mark and Kim Verhalen for the property in 9330 South Nicholson. Uh, questions concerning the certified survey map? Seeing none, motion. Dukniak moved to approve resolution number 12240-042021. That's approving a certified survey map submitted by Mark and Kim Verhalen for the property at 9330 South Nicholson Road. Guzikowski, a second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gale? Aye. And under new business, item nine is a discussion of the 4th of July festivities. Uh, to start us off, uh, we have Chair of Celebrations Commission, Carolyn Bukevich. So, Carolyn? The floor is yours. Can you hear me now? 
Yep. Yep. Uh, Carolyn Bukavich, 8147 South White Oak Drive. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for giving me this opportunity to um, speak to you today regarding the July 4th festivities. Um, it is a recommendation of the Celebrations Commission that we not move forward again with the actual parade this year. Um, however, we would like to move forward with the 4th of July fireworks um, due to concerns, um, and this is a committee decision, due to concerns around the COVID-19, um, the safety um, of them themselves and of citizens, um, we feel as though having the parade, uh, it's more in a confined area where we would have um, not very much control over the crowd, um, especially around the Shepherd Avenue um, by the Legion, it gets pretty packed in there. Um, there are still citizens who, who believe that, um, who, who are concerned about the, the COVID and concerned for their health. Um, and then I know that there's folks out there who um, don't believe in COVID and they're ready to get back to a norm. We are too. And this is a hard decision for us. Um, which is why the fireworks we thought would be a, a good opportunity to try to ease back in to this event. Um, the Lake Vista uh, is where the fireworks would be held again. Um, it lends itself to citizens being able to spread out uh, much more um, uh, in, in more in a safe um, environment. Um, so with that, uh, the recommendation is not to move forward with the um, parade, but to continue with the fireworks. And we began talks about this in February. Um, so we talked about it a little bit and the it was a unanimous decision not to move forward. And I brought it up again <laughs> in the March meeting. Again, it was unanimous decision not to, to move forward with it. April, it came up again, and we had one member who um, wanted to take on the event and hold it themselves, which um, it, this, this parade is a lot of work. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, and it begins in January. So, um, and we're, right now, we are very behind on it. Um, in February, when we first started talking about it, we didn't know where, what we know today. Um, so um, at that time, people were still thinking about getting vaccinated. Um, it, it did move faster than what we thought, but still there are still a lot of um, concerns about where we are. Numbers are still going up. CDC is still recommending no large gatherings and no traveling. So we um, feel as though that better to be safe than sorry. So that's our um, decision. Yeah, is that it, Carolyn? Yeah, I did send out a letter to all the aldermen on the, I believe it was April 12th or 7th, asking, um, letting you know our decision. And I did ask if anyone had any questions to reach out to me. I did not receive any uh, response from anyone. So that said, for now. Okay. Um, questions, discussion. Uh, Mayor Vianna, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion. Um, I, uh, I, I guess I defer to uh, Council President Gale. I, you've been doing some some road work on this as yeah. well. I mean, I have comments, and, and I'll certainly comment after uh, your opening remarks, Ken. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Uh, yeah, we have been doing, you know, some some discussion over what the reality is of uh, and, the, and the temperature out of the community in terms of actually uh, trying to pull this event off and hold it for the community. Uh, Carol, I want to you know, first of all say we appreciate obviously all the work you and your committee have done uh, to drive the cultural benefits of the city and you know, the community building aspects to what city government's all about. So uh, that being said, uh, we appreciate you know, your thoughts. We understand. Your position, we understand. There's you know, all a multitude of thoughts in that whole uh, spectrum. Um, 
I think when all said and done, though, I believe, I think the uh, the temperature in the community and the consensus generally among uh, council members will be that uh, I think at this time we're in favor of uh, attempting to pull together a group either through the celebrations committee or through a different entity or whatever to actually, uh, at least for the time being, an ad hoc basis, uh, plan an event that is, uh, is a parade as well as uh, the Fourth of July fireworks. I think uh, there'd be enough uh, ambition and, and uh, talent and fortitude to get that done. I think the community is anticipating it, looking forward to it, and expecting it. Um, so, from that said, I think uh, you know some of the feedback we've gotten from the community. There are some folks who took the time and effort to uh, uh, do an informal survey of the community. I think the overwhelming response was the uh, they expect us to attempt to have a parade for the community. Uh, and it's my ambition and my goal to, uh, to, to meet that, meet that, uh, that request. So that's my. Ken, I'm, gra I'm glad you brought that up. Concerning that survey that went out, that survey, someone went out there and voluntarily helped themselves to city letterhead and logo and put that out online, looking like a formal Oak Creek entity survey. That is a big no-no. Uh, we will investigate that and we will be in touch with the person that put that together because you cannot take a government entity like that and pass yourself off as a formal survey. We do appreciate the input without a doubt, but for future reference folks, don't do that. Alderman Dukniak, third district. Uh, and, and Carolyn, uh, I echo those same sentiments that Alderman Gale in saying thank you for, for the efforts that you and the committee have done over the years. Uh, and I completely understand and your and respect your your hesitancy or your reluctance uh, and, and thinking about the dangers of COVID. Um, feedback from my constituents that, that really lead me to decision making. Um, or help me in the decision-making process. And even before the, the uh, survey that Dan had mentioned had come out, I had received, I, I told Alderman Gale last night, I thought it was 37 emails. I went and recounted today and it was 29. Uh, and all of them were in favor of, of having a, a 4th of July parade and fireworks celebration. Um, uh, some of them very passionate as your committee members are, Carolyn, with the concerns about COVID. They're pa passionate on the other side with, you know what, it, it's, it's time to move on. Uh, it, it's, you know, we, we can put safety measures into place to make it a safe environment. And then a lot of the very last comments, if you don't feel safe, I hate to be blunt about it, don't attend. But there are a lot that uh, appear moved to want to see this happen. Uh, so I certainly would be one that would ask the council to take action um, to try and, and, and get a 4th of July, both parade and fireworks, you know, approved and, and in place. It may not be what we've seen in past years, given, like Carolyn had said, the, the, the late decision on this, we're four months behind the game. But just to have anything, people are ready to have anything out there, just to have a reason to celebrate and to celebrate safely. Um, you know, there, we, we may have to consider throw, throwing out of the candies and, and some other safety uh, protocols to follow, but... Boy, I, I, I really feel that um, conditions are right and can be conducted safely enough that, that we can have a, a safe 4th of July parade. Uh, and I appreciate all those constituents and residents that did provide feedback. Uh, I gotta be honest, I didn't have a single resident email or call me to say that they would not be in favor of having a parade. Everyone was requesting a parade. So my two cents worth. Interesting. I got about half a dozen emails. They were even across the board. So Steve. 
Alderman Krakowski, First District. Um, Carolyn, same thing that uh, Ken and, uh, and Rich said about your, your time and your, your work. Um, but you know, we've been at this over a year now with this, uh, this pandemic and I could see last year when we had a little bit of apprehension with what we did or didn't know about the, about COVID. But now, I mean, we're at a point where you know, some states are got rid of the mask ma uh, mandates. And then you got places like Michigan who they're doing what all they can and they're, they're, they're spiraling out of control. But the bottom line for the parade in my, my point of view is that when it's outside, um, people are free to attend or not. And if you go and if you feel uncomfortable because you thought you were going to enjoy the day, but it was just there's, there's too many people you, and your favorite spot is, is, is not there because it's too close to other people, you move or you put on a mask or you leave. I mean, we're not making people go to the parade. And it goes the same thing for the fireworks. I mean, if we're going to have the fireworks and not the parade, then we don't have the fireworks because if we can't have one, we can't have the other, but that's, that's not what I'm suggesting. You know, last year when we knew less than we know now, and we have close to, was it 48% of the residents of eligible residents of the state of Wisconsin have received at least one shot of the vaccine. And you can literally walk into the clinic these days and get a shot if you really want one. Um, last year, we had food truck events. We had the uh, farmer's markets. We may have had a few other events. And we asked people to wear masks, socially distance, and just be responsible for their, for their actions. And, and I don't recall the health department saying we got to shut them down because they were a, a super spreader event. I mean, heck, I mean, Catherine pulled off elections with no major issues. Um, masks are not required, but if we're going to have a parade, we simply got to ask the people to have common sense. And if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, it's you know outside. I can go on about my activities last year where I didn't wear a mask and there were no issues. But bottom line for me with, with this whole parade and have it or, or don't have it. It's, it's sad that politics has gotten involved in this entire COVID thing because you can find an expert to support your position one way. You can find a, an expert to support the opposing position. And we're down to a point where get your shot. Let's get back to normal and take response, be responsible for your actions out there. If you feel you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you need the social distance, we're going to suggest that you do. I mean, Putting this whole thing in perspective, it's like somebody once somebody told me a couple of weeks ago is listening to Dr. Fauci is like watching a tennis match. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on everybody's opinions, beliefs, and everything like that. And we need to stay out of this stuff. We need to make sure that people can enjoy life and we need to put on an event and suggest that they be responsible. I know I've said that a half a dozen times, but my wife tells me if you tell me three times i will remember things because i'm a man okay so that's the way life is <laughs> so i support having a parade i think we can find people to pull it off it may not be as big as it used to be uh may not have the attendance whether we extend the route who knows i think a committee can look at that whether we throw candy i think a committee can look at that i i'm impartial either way i mean uh, that's you know several hundred bucks that I won't have to spend if I if I'm told I can't throw candy, and then uh, if we limit our activities at the Legion Hall, if that's the end spot like we have in the past, and we may have to say, yeah, we want you to have a picnic, but you got to have your own little pod. You know, we may not give out ice cream, we may not have all the uh, bike decorating contests that we normally have, but I really think we need a parade. And before we, before we go any further, I just want to clarify a bit on, on my comments, uh, and that would be to Carolyn and, and to the Celebrations Committee. By no means um, do I think that the, the council would demand that the, the celebrations, you know, be there to, to assist with the parade. Certainly, these folks, you know, are free to, to follow what their feelings are. If, if they feel it's not safe, then certainly 
you know, we, we wouldn't want to put you in, in jeopardy or make you uncomfortable. Uh, because the, the feedback that I've been getting is that there would be a lot of people out there willing to, that, that aren't, I, I guess, aren't definitely afraid of, of what's going on out there and, and would be willing to make themselves available to, to work the event and, and make sure that we have a smooth and safe event. I just want to make that clear to you, Kelly, but by no means are we saying, hey, you guys have to be out there. I know we certainly respect your decision and understand. Mike? Hey, Carolyn, Alderman Mike Tobin. Nice to see you again, even though it's virtual. Um, Alderman Dupniak just kind of touched on my first point that I wanted to make because approximately a year ago, our Oak Creek Lions Club, which is, there's four members that sit up here right now. We canceled our Lions Fest, which is the largest activity in Oak Creek and it has been for years. We made that conscious decision, not just because of the social distancing and the COVID issue, it's because we have approximately two to 300 volunteers that run that festival. So we had to look not just at the decision that the Lions Club was making and the public in general, we had to look at the volunteers that are gonna step up and make that thing run. Now, I'm assuming Carolyn that your committee talked about that and there was a discussion. I'm, uh, let's just say, I'm assuming that that came up because it probably did. So to expand on Alderman Dupniak's point, if we do approve this, and I do support the parade because I think the landscape has changed since last year. The shots are out there, the people that wanna get them and, and you still have a two month window on the fourth. So I think the vaccine will take care of most of the problems, but you still have, you still have the question of who's gonna step up and run this thing. So I'm gonna vote for it tonight, but with the caveat that I hope if it gets if it gets approved by the council and there seems to be support for it, that your phone and your committee should the your phone should be ringing off the hook tomorrow, and people should be stepping up to run this thing because no matter how your committee feels that like a hands on on a day of the the event, you're still gonna it, it's gonna take hands on to run this thing. Anybody that thinks it doesn't is kidding themselves. I know a little bit about volunteerism. I've had 25 years in Alliance Club. It takes people, it takes bodies. So if that doesn't happen, I don't see how this thing can go forward. Thank you for recognizing that. But it, it's all okay. Okay. Oh, one other thing. I wanna add one other thing. You know, we're getting to the point where people think this COVID thing is a joke. The vaccine will take care of everything. If anybody followed the news today, Ted Nugent, the rocker, made a statement that he got COVID. He was not a COVID believer. I think a lot of somebody can relate to that. He got COVID two weeks ago. He could not get out of bed one morning. He could not breathe for two weeks. So this is not a joke and we do need to take precautions. Alderman Kukowski referred to that. People should be safe. We should take precautions. Masks seem to be helping. This vaccine will help going forward, but this this is not a joke. So let's let's just keep that in mind. I, I don't think anybody that's yeah. out here. Well, there no no. There are people out there that think well, it's a I'll joke. Care, I, I Two weeks ago, it. Nugent thought it was a joke. And Ted Nugent's not on the council. I'm, right. I'm telling you, there's people out there like that, and they all think right. it's a joke, and that's it's not a joke. Okay, that's about all I have okay. to say. Thanks, Mike. Chris. Um, Thanks for the update, Carolyn, uh, from the committee. Um, as everyone probably knows, I, where I sit here last year, I was hoping we could have it. Um, and I was a, a lone soldier going down for uh, for not being able to pull it off this year. I, I do support it. I'm not gonna uh, rehash it because everyone's kind of touched on on everything. Um, I would say that if, uh, if we decide to make it work um, and we have to create an ad, ad hoc committee that, um, I've been fortunate enough to help the last uh, three or four years behind the scenes at the uh, parade route to set up. So I'm willing to step up uh, and help uh, be part of the leadership. That's it. Okay. So um, I guess we got into it. And again, I just want to reiterate the misrepresentation of that, that form that went out 
uh, we do not want to see that happen again. So uh, once again, we have we have city staff that would initiate something like that. And you can contact your alderman. There are procedures built in for that. So, okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think that the, the other side of this coin is if consensus appears to be that we'll attempt to move forward with the parade, we have to mechanically figure out how we're going to pull that off. So yeah, and we can we can do it at large leadership. I don't know if it's the right place to do this on the fly here. Quite frankly, I wouldn't advise that you you devise it right here on the fly that you think about how this is going to look and you come up with a I, I think the plan. problem is Danny timing is, is that's why I had the action item added to the, to the agenda. So well, it's, where, it's you know, up to your, your flavor, whatever you guys want to do. I discussed this with the city attorney yesterday, you know, how in fact you got to carry this out because legally you need the protections of the city uh, from a from a sponsorship standpoint and a liability standpoint. And you need the budgetary aspect of this too to actually to carry out and you know pay the, pay the bills that are going to come with this. So, you need to legally have a structure that uh, is uh, conforming with you know, our ordinances and our in and, and the ability to to you know carry this out as an organization. So you know, if, if Carolyn's group, I'm a, you know typically way to run through celebrations that that in fact is their only charge officially through the code is to run the Fourth of July. So it either has to run through their their committee somehow, or you have to create a, an ad hoc temporary subcommittee to to do this one time this year. So uh, yeah. structure, we have to figure that out now and I prefer to do it tonight. Well, you could, again, you could go back to the celebrations committee and see if anybody wants to be part of that and maybe they've changed their mind, but- Well, they'd be only once it. a month and we're gonna be in the- They can call a special meeting, you know, I mean. I, I can't drive that, they have to do it, so. So, Mike? Well, yeah, I, I've got one, you done, Ken? Well, I mean, that's more, you know, we already had griping about performance late. Well, it's down to people, people are willing to step up. Let's activate this and get it moving. I expect, I personally expect activity in this, this week if we're doing this. That's, you got to get the people. Well, I, I, think I believe there is the people, Dan. That, that's the situation. I believe we have the people who have expressed interest in doing this. We do have to have the structure to carry it out. Uh, Melissa can maybe shed a little light on how exactly we potentially would have to do that. And I think I expect we should take some action on that tonight. Mike? Uh, wanna, just a follow up comment uh, to my comments about the bodies that you need to run this thing. I guess my question maybe would be to Andrew if we've had any. I mean, you've got city departments, you've got DPW, you've got police, you've got fire that are, are part of this celebration, part of the parade. But has there been any uh, feedback or any any comments from? Well, I get I can answer one question. DPW was at the last meeting. Kevin Arshambo was part of celebrations years ago, and he just said it's too late. You know, I mean, to pull it together, the the parade, you know, it's too late. Um, again, talk to Andrew. I don't know if you're going to commit city funds to it because you'd probably end up having to call in DPW on the fourth to work it. And then fire and police were also at the meeting, but I don't know where they sat with it. So just personally, one of my biggest fears, we, we will continue to provide the awesome support of day of and, and kind of week leading up to with our DPW and our public safety staff, if, that, if that's your direction. Uh, one of the things that I talked at length with, with Council President Gale about was we can't just task you know one or two people here in the city uh, at City Hall to to say just just make that thing happen for us. You know we don't have the expertise that the celebra uh, uh, celebrations commission does. We don't have all of the contacts, and we we just don't have the bandwidth. So while I I think it's awesome to see you know a lot of you know unanimity coming together to to bring the community together for the Independence Day. The biggest thing that I have to express is you know we can't just put you know Laura or you know, Andrew or a couple people, you know, kind of in our office in charge of this because we have no idea where to begin. We don't have those contacts that you folks do in the community for volunteers. So it's going to have to be a little more organically driven there. Uh, I think we're comfortable, with Andrew, that we'll, we'll have. Right. I mean, I could have numbers for you, Andrew, in a day, in two days. 
I think what I was saying is that I wouldn't know what to do with them if you got them to my doorstep. And, and I think, so. <laughs> I, and I would think that. Well, not, given, not for you. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and we wouldn't rely upon no. upon you or or city staff. I think there are enough people out there in the community, and some of them are sitting in the room here tonight that have had special event coordinating, and maybe not on the scale of the 4th of July parade, but you know, you and I took care of 2,000 people at Beer Fest 10 years ago without a, without a hitch. I mean, there, there are people out there, Andrew, that are willing to, to do this and that have the experience. It may not be the parades that we've had in the past. People just want to see something, some, some small degree of normalcy. Um, so I, you know, I, I, and I understand as an administrator, you're concerned. You're like, well, how the heck are we going to do this? So the troops are out there. So what's the motion going to well, be? Well, Dan, I want to I wanna add, I'd like to add something. Right, go like ahead. That, I sit here listening to the comments. If, if we are moving forward to try and hold a parade with, without any information being given to us, yeah, it's going to be a monumental task, but I would like to believe that even if, even if nobody from the celebrations committee wants to participate in this project, that somebody there would, maybe it's wishful thinking, they've got a box, they've got a file cabinet, and they got a file folder somewhere of your do's and don'ts to hold your annual parade with all the contacts, with, with the forms to send out to last year's or we two years participants, you know, how many barricades are needed, how many police, the auxiliary, the fire, all those things, because I've put on events and I've kept stuff from year to year to year so that I can go back. So somewhere they would hopefully graciously say, here's the stuff you need to put on the parade. And that's half the battle because now you, now you know what you need to get, even though we're talking July. So, and I'm not being argumentative about this. I just think this, yeah, I, I just think the stuff is there to assist whomever is going to get together to, to help put on this parade. I think that information will be provided. And this is only one time. We're just doing it one year, right? So we hope. We hope. <laughs> yeah. Carolyn, you got something? Yes, um, I, I do have some information, but I just want to let you guys know that a lot of this happens because you're working it and it happens. You, you don't always think about it, but it's things that need to happen and it's not written down. I, I did a lot of this work during the, the day, during my normal work hours. I was fortunate to be able to, to go in and do some of that work. Now you may have some volunteers who um, have the time to, to you know, work strictly on this parade, but um, what I have is what I have. Well, Carolyn, you, you would be, this is Alderman Kurkowski, it's so it's in it's it's in your brain you've got it all memorized that you go from year to year if you choose not to to, to participate and, and i'm not putting you on the spot but would you be willing to over the course of several days to start jotting down some of these things that need to be done so that we can put on attempt to put on a decent parade probably I mean, not because you've already discredited me and our decision about having this parade so i probably wouldn't Wow, that's too bad. Well, we we expect the, the you know the committees uh, such as yours exist solely to do the uh, the bidding of the common council and at, at the pleasure of the common council. So we we expect the full and complete cooperation of I'm any a, materials I'm and planning. Volunteer. I'm a volunteer. I'm not uh, getting paid to do this. I understand. Okay. But the celebrations committee is an entity of the city government, so. And that being said, I, we don't need to. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we just it. expect it to be shared as appropriate. I think more important though is to find out from the city attorney how, in fact, we need to structure this to get it to get it organized and get it moving. Yep, if that's what you guys want to do. So, Melissa, thanks. I can share some information just from a bigger perspective in terms of a couple of comments that have been made tonight in terms of the management of the event, if it's going to be certainly in terms of risk management, there's a concern about what insurance and coverage we have. 
if it's going to be a city sponsored event, then by code, we have, as Alderman Gale has um, mentioned a couple of times, our code says that the Celebrations Commission shall supervise the annual 4th of July celebration and any other celebration which may be authorized and or directed by the Common Council. Having said that, we've been in an unusual time, unprecedented is a word that we've come to um, here too often. Having said that, to try to figure out and give options um, from my perspective to the council, you have on the agenda, the addendum of possible motion to take action. So it sounds like you want to move on this and I guess I would just ask what you're looking to do. There's authority for the mayor, if it were his pleasure, to convene by a motion um, or a resolution is what it is by code under section 2.23 sub D. Um, we certainly don't have a resolution before us tonight is my point. Um, but it would, be, though, Melissa? it would be a motion um, that would be from the mayor um, appointing such special committee or committees as may be deemed advisable or as provided by motion stating the number of members and the object to perform such duties as may be assigned to them. So I would suggest that this is not um, related to 4th of July festivities uh, because that's specifically called for otherwise in the code, but this is not a situation that I think any of us would have anticipated and we would be having the discussion about and especially a year later. Um, so I'm happy to help to try to assist with what you're trying to do in terms of a motion tonight, but the other thought is you're having the discussion. This council has had many discussions before and certainly um, the general direction is to want to proceed with having a parade sponsored by the city, facilitated by the city. So if that's the case and that's the call, I think I also heard some comments of, we need to get moving on this. Um, if there is some sort of organic fashion with 29 emails of potential volunteers only to one alderman, it could be that we could come back with something more formal on the next common council meeting agenda. All I mean by that is if you wanted to formalize the appointment of a committee, if the mayor saw that fit to happen, um, not to put the pressure on the mayor, but um, that's a directive by code. If there is some direction otherwise to um, ask or direct the celebrations commission, that sounds like that might be rather a non-starter where certainly the concerns have been expressed. So I just put that out there to you to the extent of if there's some time, lead time here with the sharing of information, um, certainly as the council can do in an open meeting, maybe there are some pieces to move forward with now without a formal motion where you may not know what that might look like. And um, we can go from there and bring something back if that's even necessary. So- Mr. Mayor, if I can add on that, Andrew. I'm gonna do what, to you what I asked you not to do to me, <laughs> but perhaps to satisfy what Melissa just kind of underwrote for us here. Couldn't it be the case that two or three aldermen are appointed to a subcommittee and then can garner additional volunteers to help pull a parade off and satisfy what it is we're talking about? Obviously just serving as a, a lead and a liaison, but actually finding something actionable tonight to do to get the work going. Could that be something that satisfied uh, the intent of the of the ordinance? And then that puts you guys on the spot, but it allows you to start doing the work, I think, in a more formal fashion, knowing if we need to, there you go. I'm going to say this, if we need to sweep up after the parade, we can do something more formal at your next council if, if needed uh, for any other purpose. But, and I'm not trying to put words in Attorney Carl's mouth, but that could satisfy moving on something tonight to get going on some formal activity uh, in the spirit of the code. Is that fair? Yeah, I have two things. One is that was such an intelligent use of sweep up after the parade. <laughs> so I, I know you wanted someone to comment on that. So that's one. And good job. The second piece is perhaps um, food for thought. It might be a better... Um, or suggested consideration for maybe just two aldermen 
I mean, in terms of committee work and noticing public meetings and decisions in that regard, I have a little bit of a concern, just putting it out there publicly with three uh, aldermen in terms of um, that sort of, if it's going to be an ad hoc committee. Oh, two is a so, that will be swifter, I think is what you're getting at. Um, that's part of it. Yes. Specifically named as a subcommittee of the, of the uh, celebrations committee, Melissa? Do that or just an ad hoc committee for the 4th of July parade uh, for 2021. Promotion? You could do that. Or does the mayor have to do that? The mayor can make the appointment. Um, the motion, we can have the discussion if the mayor is going to make an appointment of the convening of an ad hoc committee for the 4th of July parade for 2021. So the discussion would go, we're going to talk about an ad hoc committee for the 4th of July parade, 2021. Specifically, yeah. And 2021. Yep. And I am looking for two volunteers off the council. I think Alderman Guzikowski and Alderman Duke have expressed interest. Do they speak or do you speak? <laughs> Guys, I want to hear from you. I'm in. I'm in. Are you, are you comfortable with that, Mayor? If that's, if that's, You're the, on the spot here. if that's the will of the council, for sure. Hey, look, I'm with you guys. I get it. It's great to do things. Um, this is a really tough call um, throughout the area. They're shutting things down to early August. I mean, you know, uh, state fair is on the bubble. Um, I know a couple of the ethnic festivals are going later in August. It's a really hard call. It, it, I mean, we could be, you know, we could be at full capacity or we could be really bad again. As Mike said, you know, I don't want to be Johnny Raincloud. I, I, I have an instructor at work and he was very much, hey, whatever happens, happens. That guy's in intensive care right now getting his plasma treatment. Um, I, I really hope he pulls through. Um, never want to say I told you so, but I, I, his wife is so scared. It ain't even funny. So it, it, it's serious stuff. Um, but again, if you're going to do this, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be the parade you're accustomed to. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to speak for celebrations. I, I'm very close with them, obviously, but they, they felt that you could ease in through the fireworks and, and people would stay and do their thing. I, I don't know what the right decision is, but if you guys feel you can pull this off and you can do it safely, okay? I can't speak for how people are going to behave. We all know that. But uh, I, I will I will appoint a committee to look into it. Put it this way, we, we're not going to start it. No, you may get into this and three weeks into it, our numbers are skyrocketing and you say, holy cow, we got to pull back. I, you know, so, you know, I, I'm, you know, Based on you know what Rich said, you'll you'll probably find some people, but it's the day of. It's it, Mike. You know how it goes. There's just twists and turns with things like that. Um, DP, you know, DPW plays a large part in it, and everything like that. So it's difficult. So, but if you would like the appointment, I would appoint an ad hoc committee of was it Rich and Chris? Chris, yep. Of you two, oh, Mark, would you like? I just wanted to know if I could comment, please. Uh, I wasn't going to take comment on this. But it's, it's hard enough. I, I really hate to do that to you. Well, the only thing I was going to, well, I guess, is, is that. I guess you're going to say it anyways, I mean, aren't you? Like, I mean, the, the city, the city give a direction to a committee to explore to oversee, it. Oversee the celebration. I, the way I'm looking at it from outside is the, the committee doesn't have the right to shut the celebration down. That falls on you. So if you give direction back to the committee that's already in place to work on it, they've got to work on it. And, and it, it, to me, I'm just, just from the outside, I think you're putting more people into the mix that shouldn't be in there. The direction from the, from the council, I, I think, should be you guys were assigned a task. Okay. And if you feel that you can't do it, come back to the council, and we should vote on, on canceling the 4th of July or whatever the thing is, not them. But to be clear, and it was stated by the chair of, of celebrations. It was a unanimous discussion vote that they weren't going to move ahead with it because of people's there's there's elderly, there's older people there, there's some people with health conditions. For whatever reason, whatever, they weren't comfortable doing it. I don't see them changing it at this point in time. So that's why you're gonna have to go with the ad hoc. I, I do appreciate your comments, Mark. But again, to go back and ask them and say, do it. I think it's a non-starter. I, I think it's a non-starter. So 
I think if you guys want to explore this, you can get the ad hoc committee to explore it moving forward and see what the viability of doing it is at this late stage. Right. And then you know, at least we're making the attempt to get that. And you may be right. Maybe in a week or 10 days, we come to find out, boy, this is, mm -hmm. you know, going to be more, far more difficult than we thought. Or it's, you or will it have the freedom. Paid. It won't be that hard. God bless America. So, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So with that, can I make those appointments in addendum 9A? You can, Mayor, make the appointments of such a special committee. Um, and if there were a desire to make a motion, that's possible. Um, but you can go ahead and just direct the appointment or creation of a special committee. And I, we'll do Alderman Gale. Or a special ad hoc committee. Ad hoc. That is the pleasure of the council and the determination with the mayor. I'm wondering about budgetary. We need to make sure that this group has funding. To our city administrator in terms of funding that's allocated certainly out of the celebrations commission, but I think that um, it's part and parcel of the same event planning that's designated. Thank you. Well, I'm hearing that you want to facilitate a parade and 4th of July festivities. So you, you direct the staff here, you, you, you tell me, uh, I'm just the conduit to getting you the funds, but it sounds like that's your pleasure. So I can facilitate any of those kind of business type transactions uh, as the committee or, or the mayor see fit. I keep, keep in mind that um, you ad hoc this 4th of July celebration parade and, and fireworks that you may be ad hocing the rest of the celebrations in the city moving forward. You, you, there's a danger here of losing that committee. I've got a lot of respect for that committee. Thank you very much so. Okay, so who here wants to take up the rest of the celebrations in the city? That's, that's, a, real, that's a real thing. We're dealing with something real here, okay? Those people have spent a lot of hours in the city. I've got a lot of respect for them. I, I'm, I'm tending the other way. The only way I'd, I'd, I'd vote for this ad hoc committee is if it makes an attempt to work with celebrations. And it, at this point, I don't see that happening. Mike, just real quick, um, the ad hoc committee, whoever's going to try to pull us off, we were just informed that celebrations wouldn't be willing to share information with them. So. It's a moot point right now. We're just trying to see what, for the best interest of, of our citizens, what we can do to make happen that day. Ad hoc, so, is, ad hoc is temporary. Yes. What I'm saying is you're you're risking it being permanent. I, well, I understand. If you lose your committee. We, we, we don't have a choice right now because it's, uh, we, we don't have a lot of time left here. It, aren't they still gonna do the fireworks? I mean, they said they wanted to do the fireworks yeah. but not the, the parade. Plain so, and simple. I think they're okay. pissed off. Yeah, to be yeah. they are. They are. Well, they, they're entitled to their opinion, but they're they exist to do what we asked them to do. So if you do what you have to do, yeah. it's at the risk of you stepping up for every other celebration in the yeah. city. Just well, so you may, keep that in mind. We, we we may have to cross that bridge, but I think for this time, at the end you don't know that, what you're taking on when you say that. <laughs> All right. Right now, the plan is the ad hoc committee is specifically tasked with carrying out and organizing and planning a July 4th parade. Parade. Correct. Yeah. Parade. Yep. And fireworks. No, no, no fireworks is being held by uh, and by celebrations. <laughs> You're making my point. <laughs> we didn't make that choice. The, the celebrations committee decided that for themselves. So we're, we're attempting to backfill that so hey gents uh what do we got one, just this one it listening to to mike and chris maybe i'm being unrealistic here but if i was a member of the committee the celebrations committee and i was told tonight that they want to have the parade honestly my opinion would be well, we're still going to do the fireworks because that's what we told the city we were going to do, but it's on them to do the parade. And I would move forward with that. 
okay, I'm not involved in the parade. They're doing that, but we have to buckle down and take care of the fireworks because that's what we said we were going to do. I hope they don't change their mind, but that's the, Back, that's, that's the impression that I got is that they just don't want to do the parade, but they still want to do the fireworks. So I hope that is that was that, the recommendation, but keep in mind, there's been events where members of the celebration have ever resigned mid event. Yeah. So, you know, it, it happens, you know, it, this is probably, and to Mike's point, it, celebrations and beyond this, this current council, even before when Chris Bolander kind of headed it up when Dick was here, this is probably the, 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 the most demanding committee unpaid in the city. It takes up your holidays. It takes up planning and, you know, there's, there's so much time that goes into a coordination with people such as Leslie and, and Catherine and, and other city people. There's really a lot of work that goes into this. Um, and, and it does suffer burnout over time. Um, you know, you think about it. I mean, it's, it's all the holidays. It's tree lighting. It's the 4th of July. It's, it's everything. And you do see a turnaround there. And we've seen it at the city. You know, we had um, uh, Lampy from Streets ran it for a long time. And, and he got very, you know, we had Kevin there. And, and you just, you run the route. You're, it's time away from your family and everything. So what, it's, it's a big deal. What was, what was the tree lighting? What's that? Oh, they got a plan. You know, I mean, they do, tree, they do summer solstice. Go there. They, they, do, they do the tree lighting. They do, I, I mean, they do the high and, 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 and things uh, like that. Let's, let, let, let's get to this point here. Give Chris and I until the beginning of next week. That, I'm, I'm fine with that. And we, we will off. report back as to whether we have interest from the community at large and volunteer you know, people that want to volunteer, and, and we'll probably be able to tell you by next Monday if we're going to be able to pull this off. And and I think that's fair. I think that's where we should have been ten minutes ago. Okay. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And we might even be able to. Get that All right. Set. So Melissa, do I got to reiterate this? So whoever is poor person doing these minutes, I apologize. <laughs> Can you phrase something, and I just say. Has stated. Well, um, I'm not sure exactly what you want to do. You so may if you are trying to uh, I'll appoint an ad hoc committee to assist to, the to, celebrations commission to, with the planning. the planning of the 2021 Fourth of July festivities. Great, 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 great. You want specific parade? Okay, parade. And I'm only and uh, uh, the alderman. Uh, Alderman Guzikowski and Alderman Dukniak shall be appointed. It should be fine. And I think that that's consistent with Alderman Gale's concern in terms of the fund or funds that need to be expended. They would be out of the Celebrations Commission um, for such a festivity, including the parade. Okay. Clear as mud. I think we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Onward. Onward we go. Okay. Um, item 10, uh, item actually item 10, 11, and 12. Um, these will need a motion, but we need a motion to hold them. Uh, we will take them up at the May 4th meeting. Uh, those are the mayoral appointments that we do annually and uh, the common council president appointments to committees. 13 you're going to act on tonight then uh, 13 yes okay, these are great. reappointments to existing right. committee Gil moved in to hold items 10 11 and 12 until the next common council meeting may 4th is ghost go second motion alderman kirkowski aye Dickniak, aye tillman aye gail aye guzikowski aye and item 13 uh it's consideration for some mayoral appointments to different boards uh, if you would, please take a look. And if there's any discussion, uh, please feel free to speak up. And again, I would like to thank all these people for their time and service. Uh, we talked a little bit about that, you know, not only celebrations, but you can see uh, all this work goes on behind the scenes. I say it all the time at planning and everything like that. Uh, it's people like that that make our jobs much easier. So thank you to everybody.
Jim, when I was look, when I was looking at this um, last week, uh, I was trying to figure out. Um, I started going back, just looking at how long some of these people have been on these different commissions, and I was going to try to start adding up, you know, total time to serve. I I can imagine it would be for some of these people a lot of time when you add them up. You know, we had a couple. I don't. You probably those. You know, a lot of you would remember uh, Wally and Marianne Dickman. Mm-hmm. And they served the city like for almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was insanely ridiculous. And Wally did a couple of committees back in the day and he added it up. They had well over almost a hundred years of service to the city. It was crazy. So um, but we will need a motion on that when you yeah. guys are satisfied. Yeah. Gil moved to approve item 13A through I as listed. Here's a go, Gil second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. And item 14 is a resolution approving a certified survey map um, for Jim Keene at Truck Country and the properties at 9970, uh, 120, 140 South 20th Street. Uh, I don't know if Doug's still with us, but if you guys take a look, I can probably uh, walk you through this one. From planning. I, I hope so. Can you hear me? Oh, you, um, there you are. Okay. Anyways, you sound better, Doug. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, this, this is a certified survey map for the properties for the, the proposed uh, development of the new truck country facility. Uh, and it's actually on South Ridgeview Drive, although it's got a 20 street address. I won't go into the different addresses. They are requesting approval of the CSM, which actually combines these properties and dedicates the public right away for the proposed cul-de-sac at the end of South Ridgeview Drive. Now you will note, uh, some of you may be aware that these properties are the subject of an official map amendment request, the hearing for which is scheduled for May 4th. Uh, so this CSM is in anticipation of that official map amendment going through and the approval of the proposed truck sales and service development for truck country. So again, it, it can consolidates three parcels, dedicates the right of way for that cul-de-sac, uh, you know, the, the map amendment is going to have a public hearing on May 4th. So anything that you would do, this resolution recognizes that it is contingent upon the passage and approval of the official map amendment and just uh, not part of the resolution, but uh, recognize that the, the site and building plans will only be approved by the plan commission. And just as I know, there will be a neighborhood meeting to kind of go over those plans with the neighbors on Judith Place. So with that in mind, the plan commission has reviewed this request and they have recommended approval subject to the conditions. Again, approval of the official map amendment uh, subject to technical corrections and the approval and recording of all easements prior to recording of the map. Any questions or comments from the council? Any questions for Doug? No. And there were some um, concerned citizens, Alderman Guzikowski, uh, we're gonna set up a neighborhood meeting along with the applicant just to address some buffering things there, um, people south of truck country, well, or the CSM, the proposed CSM for truck country. If nothing else, uh, motion. Mr. Mayor. Oh, um, sorry, yes. Ryan Spot, the attorney for the applicant is on. Oh, please okay, stand. please put him on. Second. Ryan, you should be able to speak when you didn't name an address for record. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, Ryan Spot, Davidson Kilthow, 111 East Kilbourne Avenue, Suite 100, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53202. Um, just real quick, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm, I've been working with Brian Randall in uh, Truck Country on this project. Brian's double booked tonight, so uh, you get me. Um, I just wanted to make myself uh, known in case there's any questions or anything like that regarding the CSM uh, or the neighborhood meeting that we are trying to plan together. Um, so if there's any questions, I just want to let uh, the council know that I'm here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, motion. Ms. Kelsey makes a motion that the Common Council adopt resolution number 12241-042021, a resolution approving certified survey map submitted by Jim Kane Truck Country. McCoy Group for the properties at 9970, 
120 and 140 South 20th Street. Kelsey, you'll second. Roll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. And item 15 is our license committee, and I'd like to turn that over to Alderman Kurkowski at this time. Thank you, Mayor. I trust everybody has uh, received a cop or review the Common Council report for license committee. Uh, I do want to point out on item number three, uh, that is the last refund of $10,000 the city will give to any uh, reserve class B license applicant. Uh, the law has since changed and everybody who holds a reserve license now pays $10,000, but they don't get the money back if they get a regular license. So this establishment is the last one that they have on the books. So other than that, does anybody have any other questions, cares, or concerns? Great. Rakowski make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the April 20th, 2021 license committee report. Dukniak second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. And item 16 is our vendor summary report uh, ending April 14th, 2021. If you'd all take a look and uh, direct your questions appropriately. And when you're satisfied, uh, motion. Thank you, Mayor. Gail will move to approve the April 14, 2021 vendor summary report in the total amount of $559,323.22. Guzikowski will second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. And item 17 is consideration of a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statute 19.85 to discuss the following. A, section 19.85 sub one sub G to discuss potential litigation related to the opioid crisis. President Gail. Thank you, Mayor. Gail moves to convene the closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statute section 19.85 to discuss the following. A, section 19.85 sub one sub G to discuss potential litigation related to the opioid crisis. Is it Koski or Saka? Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Okay, we will now convene into a closed session and resume at its conclusion. When you're ready, Mike. Yeah, almost. We will now convene into open session. Yeah. Let's go move us into open session. One minute, second. Roll call. Uh, Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Oh, sorry. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. And just before we adjourn, um, just community announcement. Uh, Saturday, we have our Earth Day celebration. That is the 24th. And all you aldermen that have all these community volunteers and are gung-ho to help the community, they can start this Saturday by joining us to pick up garbage throughout the park <laughs> from 10 to noon. So we should see a good 20, 30 people here, minimal. Uh, start at 10 a.m. till noon. Uh, we gather at City Hall, we'll have some supplies and hopefully we get a turnout and you know, the community's raring to get out is a good way to do it. Did you want to help the community? Kind of over there. We'll assign you somewhere. I'm um, you and your 30. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that, uh, motion to adjourn. Kelsey will make a motion to adjourn. Hold on a second. Roll call. Well, Alderman Tillman. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Night, everybody.